Hello everyone and welcome back to Run It Up, Run It Up number 60. Yes, that's right. We are here today playing some 50 cent $1 No Limit Texas Hold'em on ultimatepoker.com and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I think it's going to be a fun week. It's Halloween week, which means almost nothing to me. However, it's true. <laughs> it is Halloween week, and I'm uh, feeling pretty good here, I guess. I don't know what it is. I had a lovely little weekend. It was very quiet, which is how I like my weekends. And I feel refreshed and energized and ready to go. I got ourselves two jacks here, which I certainly feel is worth a re-raise. I don't know either of these people too well. I feel like I recognize UFO as a regular. I think he plays pretty often. Uh, the other guy in the cat avatar, don't think I know too well. I'm excited to do probably mostly run-ups this week. I think last week we had some weird things that like weren't running up, whatever. Let's let's run it up this week. You know, the our bankroll is ready to go. Fourteen hundred twenty-four dollars rocking and rearing. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah. And uh in case you're sharp eyed, I guess we'll wait for this hand to conclude before I deviate too far off the path. That's right. I guess it's more of a single path, really. Uh, all right. Let's play this handout first. Adrian Eh. Adrian Eh. Something. Some 83. 63? 83. Limp, or I should say posted and then defended against our raise. Well, here we are. We could have the best hand. It's certainly possible. It's possible that our opponent will fold better than us if we fire twice. These things are all possible. I think I'm going to bet twice here. We might get her to fold a better hand than ours. It's possible. It's also possible that we get value from worse, right? Our opponent could have queen 10, could have 10, 8, could have two diamonds that are playing passively. And uh, so I think actually either possibility is uh, reasonable. We could get value from worse. Also could get better to fold. Could be a knit, you know. Could just have two fours and be like, I don't know what to do here. I just fold. Well, we're going to be defending here. My favorite hand, the 5-3 suited. Got to defend with position. Do I love it? Of course I don't love it. No, we're loving it. That's right. I'll do preemptively. <laughs> That's right. Rapid fire bell. Got a call here. We're not loving it, but equity is too good. Oh, look at us. Oh, no. <laughs> he turned such a good card. Oh, well, one of us made a flush. We were in the head. We were in the lead for the flush uh, The flush race. Didn't work out for us there. We got our money in pretty good, though. You know? our uh, I think we're like 65% there. That's my guess. Something like that. Should we find out? I mean, I don't really care. If you're curious... My guess is that we're like 75, or sorry, 65% there. We need a 5, a 3, a deuce, a 6, or a 7, the two straight cards, and then, or a diamond twice. That's pretty good. That's a lot of outs. That is a lot of outs. Didn't work out for us that time, though. It was probably because we preemptively used the bink bell and got punished by the karmatic poker god that doesn't like. Don't preemptively celebrate. Come on, Jay Carver, you know better than that. That's right. <laughs> Getting berated by the fake poker god. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, we managed to ship that hand while I babble off about nothing. At least we won that hand with our eight high. We didn't end up having to do anything there. All right, so how do you guys like this? I got to go to full screen. Once we stop getting hands, I will switch. I'll switch over to the full screen for you. Don't know our opponent at all, so I think that uh, what we do here is really kind of irrelevant. We don't really know anything. We could raise. That would be fine. But we don't know. We have no idea how aggressive or uh, whatnot our opponent will be. I'm happy to limp raise here, though. I think that's a weird thing that he wouldn't probably expect, and we do have the best hand very often. I think we could even limp raise to 10. Sure, let's limp raise to 10. Okay. He was just joshing, I suppose. Anyway, assuming we don't get a hand here on the button, it's good, but we'll we'll put it on hold for the time being. Uh, let's check out this little this little thing here, huh? I'll put that there. Look at that. <laughs> That's right. It's a run it up pumpkin. That's right. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I haven't th thought of like a particularly great name for it yet. However, it's a pumpkin that says run it up in it. 
how can you beat it? How can you beat it? I'll, uh, I'm not quite sure it's ready for like dark setups. Wait till tomorrow. Maybe I'll light it for you guys so you can see how it really looks. But uh, yeah, it's just chilling over there. It says right up. How could you not love it? It's great. So here our uh, opponent limped and we caught and we raised and then our opponent has just bet out pot here. So don't really want to raise. I think I'm fine with calling. Could have the best hand. Not really 100% sure, of course. I mean, I'm relatively short now. Let's see if this guy just blasts it like it did with the ace-10. Call. I call. I call. I call. All right. That's right, boys and girls. <laughs> That's right. We did it. All right. So, it took us two tries with the 5x of suiteds, but we got it done eventually. Puppy dog feet, you know? I forget. We're a leprechaun. We need the puppy dog feet. You know? That's it. It's almost unfair. The lucky clovers. Raising it up here with jack and the nine offsuit in the cutoff. Don't really see any reason not to. Just seems like everybody's playing relatively tight, which means green light for us. Oh my god, the heater. The heater. Gonna start here with the bet. Our opponent can call with any number of ace highs, diamond draws, could just put pressure on us some way, could have a three, could have pocket pairs if I didn't say that already yet. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm going to make a bold prediction and say we're not going to lose this hand. Uh, don't want to bet too big because we would really like our opponent to call. You know, if our opponent has, oh, okay, calls very quickly. Ten of diamonds is a perfectly good card. Bet seven dollars. Let me tell you something, Cat Avatar. If there's ever been a person that's been in the cage, it's you, buddy. You're in the cage and don't even realize how badly you're in the cage. I don't want to make it too big because it's hard for this guy to to call here, right? Like, let's make it 31. I think 31 is probably near the most we could ever make it here. All right, got paid off pretty quickly. I have four of a kind, sir, with a jack kicker. Nice end. <laughs> I probably can't beat that. That's my guess. That's min raise. We're on a heater. You can't be on a heater if you fold. You know, it's a prime core rule of heatership. If you're on a heater and then you fold, your heater is over. You've done it to yourself. Let's see if we can get it done here with a, with a little continuation bet. Three dollars. Let's see if we can turn a card. That's not necessarily the card I was hoping for. However, it is kind of a scary card. I feel like there is some chance we could just get it done here. But I don't know if this guy is particularly the foldy type. This player seems more of like the sticky type than the foldy type. Tis just a guess. Uh, I might be tempted here to try to bluff, you know? Uh, I probably am not, to be honest. I think I'm just going to quit. Just going to check back and, and give, up the, give up the ruse. I just don't think this particular player is going to fold here too often, you know? I mean, definitely going to fold some hands. Like, if he has 10-8 offsuit, that hand would probably have folded. Like, you know, I, I think that uh, maybe he would fold, like, that hand exactly. But I wasn't really sure that he would defend hands as bad as, like, 10-6 offsuit. And I actually don't even know for sure if that player would have folded that hand on the turn. Mm, probably. But you don't know for sure. And uh, as far as the river goes, uh, I mean... Odds are he would have folded his exact hand, or her exact hand. I'm switching back and forth. Queen Latifah over here would have probably folded her hand. If uh, I'm going to go with the gender of the avatar. That's what I'm always going to go with, you know? And we only really have one other human character here, so Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah it is. So, uh, so yeah. I'm excited about this week. I think uh, I'm going to do... I, I haven't really had the time slash energy to stream as much as I would have liked. So, I think I'm going to actually set a day to stream. And I'll repost, I'll repost that video, the, video, uh, the video of the stream on YouTube. So, if you guys couldn't make the stream, you will be able to watch the show. But I think it would, make, I think it would be fun. I haven't done it in a long time, actually. I think the last time I streamed was like a month ago. So, I think it would be fun to stream... Uh, I'm not sure poker or non-poker, but you know, once we get back in the swing of uh, of streaming something, then we'll figure that. We'll figure we'll figure the what out later. But I'm thinking Friday might be a might be a stream day. So later in the week, I'll I'll put pick like a time something like that. I'm on a pretty good schedule to do like a stream at like two or three p.m. Pacific time, something like that. Friday is not really the best day, I guess, maybe for a stream, or is it? 
I don't know. You guys tell me maybe. I'll I, I can bend my schedule pretty pretty flexibly if there's like one particular time that works. Could be Thursday night, could be could be like Saturday, but you know, don't know about that 100%. Also, isn't there a UFC event? No, not this weekend. There was one there was a UFC event last uh, Saturday though. It was great not only because it was like a solid night of fights. Not like phenomenal, but it was pretty good. However, I managed to scoop it. I, I had like four or maybe even five bets. Scoop a loop, just crushed it. That was that was nice. So let's see if we think we can call here profitably. My first instinct is that we can't. He bent it kind of big, which is fine. Uh, he could be kind of wide here. I think we're just gonna fold. Lockdown poker. Lockdown poker. He made it kind of big, you know. He's probably aware at this point that we're aware that this player has probably got, got too much, so he can attack us kind of widely, which makes it better to call with seven six suited, right? I mean, obviously, if you know that he is super strong, you can play seven six suited pretty straightforwardly. But we don't know that for sure. So I think we're gonna just. I mean, if he had made it twelve, I probably would have called. I would have been tempted to. I think fourteen is like probably just too big. I just don't think we make that. Uh, we make a profit there often enough calling, but it's very close. My I typically feel like if my instinct is to fold, it's probably a fold. <laughs> like <laughs> so often, I just want to call. I feel like whenever I actually do end up. Uh, wanting to fold it's probably the right thing to do anyway yeah it was great i had machida i forget actually everybody i had because it was a team effort the the team of geniuses that i've cobbled together that think about things including ufc fights did a pretty good job i thought of uh of candy capping that fight those fights even though i i myself did very little research i certainly did enjoy sweating the profits if you've been uh, if you're a ufc fan i've had uh my one of my friends, David Williams, not the poker player, writing uh, write-ups for UFC events, and I think he's on like a his his write-ups are on like a six-win heater. Uh, by the way, our heater could have been still alive right now, uh, but you know, our, he's been on a he's been on like a five. He he correct, he correctly predicted that Gustafson Jones would be a very close slugfest. He correctly predicted uh, Jake Shields over Damian Maya. Correctly predicted. Uh, there's a couple other ones I'm forgetting, but then correctly predicted Machida was going to destroy Mark Munoz, which correctly happened. And of course, sample size is not big enough to be significant, but just saying. Don't say I didn't warn you when, he, when the kid runs off like 20 in a row. You know? I'm trying to help, you know? I'm trying to help you little running up warriors out there. You know? All scattered across the winds. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right oh my god we would have had quads twice that was unbelievable guys all in he doesn't have four of a kind i promise you that much cat avatar he guys like i'm sick of paying off quads i'm sick i'm out of here all right sorry bud all right folding the hand here under the gun let's pull a question I'm excited to pull some questions. This is a good, as you guys can tell, you can't already tell, this is one of the later night videos. That's right. I don't like the eight in the morning videos, man. They're just too, I'm just not relaxed enough yet. You know, this is 8 p.m. video. That's a, this is the back, we're back to the evening video schedule this week. That's partially why I'm excited about videos again. Morning videos, you know, as nice as it is to like, take to be, like, be responsible and you know take care of work in the morning and then do other things the rest of the day i just can't i just can't do it i just can't do it the poker player in me just isn't isn't capable of doing it you know it's f fine but that like that that second mike mattisau video from last week is like the most poker classy video i think i'll ever do like again like that was i watched that video back a little bit and i was like oh my god it's like seminar it's like poker seminar in here all right Let's move on to a question. Oh. Oh, all right there. Don't know how that all happened, but I don't really care. <laughs> Someone's won money at poker. Hmm, interesting. Not. <laughs> wow, all of a sudden I got all mean. I'm like shitting on these people. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I was distracted by the Dear Jay Carver. All the love distracted me a little bit, you know? Oh, I'm definitely calling for $2. $2 will not get me out of this. Oh, yeah, let's do it. 
Let's see a flop, bitches. That is a remarkably, remarkably unexciting flop for us. We're going to need some, quite amount of help to make something happen here. Given that 10 people, or sorry, 10 cards, cards are not people. Given that 10 cards saw the flop here, you would think that someone probably has some piece of this. All right, we could be in first place. Tis possible. Uh, I think that it probably makes more sense to check and let someone try to make a, a silly bluff more so than bet. If it checks through twice, I'm going to be a little sad. Hopefully nothing comes to punish us. So now here we are on the river. Almost for sure we had the best hand on the turn, right? Almost for sure. Let's be real. Almost for sure we had the best hand on the turn. $8 looks sufficiently bluffy, might allow someone that has spiked a pair to call. Maybe someone has jack-8, someone has 7-5. This player of all the players that has saw the river, I think, is most likely to call us with some piece of something. All right, we got it done. Bad flop, who cares, you know? We made the pair status, and that's it. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you guys, pair status is all you need to be successful in poker. If you can truly appreciate the value of a pair... You'll make it. You'll do great in poker. <laughs> that's all. That's a very key, a very key skill, understanding the value of pair status. All right. Well, I tried to bet once. I don't particularly think this person is folding, but I'm worth. It's worth two dollars and fifty cents to me to try. You know, if this guy has got like king deuce, what are your plans here? You're gonna just call down, sir. Well, that'd be the right thing to do. Uh, okay. All right. I guess I give up. All right. You got me, kid. PJ Spartacus, the cat avatar. He's got $104.20. That's right. Oh, what to do? Oh, I don't know. Oh, should I bet or should I check? <laughs> you did it. You won the pot. Congratulations. You're the winner. All right. I've got a J.J. Carver. I've been waiting. It's been in my hands since I made fun of somebody very aggressively like an orbit ago. I'm waiting. All right, I guess we'll fold. I would like to call with hands like this, but, you know, this player over here doesn't have enough money for me to do anything besides fold, unfortunately. Let's read some questions. Dear J. Carver, got it right. I am a young poker player and have been playing poker for just over a year. My bankroll is still small, but I recently satellited into a $56 tournament with a huge prize pool. I mostly play sit and go, so I was wondering if you have any tips on getting through a huge tournament. Should I play aggressively or passively at the start? May I remind you of the old adage, um, you could, <laughs> you can't win a tournament in the, in the, uh, how does it go? Uh, oh man, it's like, you can't win a tournament in the first, the first day, I think is usually how people say, you can't win a tournament on day one, but you sure can lose it. That's right. Chew on that one for a little bit. I hate that I've been saying that lately. Chew on that. Like, I feel like where, I don't know where I got that from, but I really hate it. Anyway. I am aware that the tournament will last a long time, so what is your advice on focusing for a long period of time? Many thanks in advance. Keep drilling it. Thank you. I, 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 you know, definitely we've been, we've been doing some drilling this video. Courtney. Thanks, Courtney. A little, uh, one of the female summer villains. Summer Vixen, right? That's, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Summer Vixens. All right, sure. Seems very, uh, you know, I don't quite know. <laughs> I hope people, yeah, I, you know. Anyway, let's answer, <laughs> let's answer your question. I feel like, you know, if somebody, you know, I didn't come up with that, but I kind of like it. I think it's kind of clever. I don't know who came up with that. Is it Rory? Rory came up with Summer Villains, which was really good. But uh, I don't know about the Vixens one. The percentage of women that have watched the show has definitely declined. If you were watching the show from the beginning, in the early run-ups, I said there was like 9% female viewership, which I was very proud of that. But I think that it's gotten down now to like 6 or 7% because as the show has grown, more and more men seem to have been, uh, we've, we've, we've outgrown the pace of men to women, unfortunately. So we're going to have to work on that like ladies' day we were talking about. <laughs> it's ladies' night on running up. That's right. Ladies, drink for free. 
<laughs> anyway, I don't know what I'm doing here on the flop. I was just like babbling as I was thinking, which I guess is the best kind of babbling. Well, it's possible this player is just going to be like, I'm all in, which would be great with me. Uh, I feel like I'm just going to call, you know, I want to give this player the most opportunity to make a mistake. And I think if I shove that she'll probably not make too many mistakes. So it's possible we're beaten out, but I don't give one hoot if that's the case. I mean, $16, you got it if you've somehow got a full house. Let's see if she'll try to bluff, which would be kind of crazy. So do we want that last $3.24, or should we just call? <laughs> I mean, I guess we're just going to call. I feel like we're slow rolling, but, you know. Maybe we could have got that extra $3.00. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't really 100% sure as to what that meant when she didn't just shove. So I was a little confused. You know, it could have been like, it could have been, was it Rounders? Was that the movie? Or it's like, I left you with bus fare. <laughs> God, I would never say that. I don't mean that. But uh, it could be if it was a movie scene. Anyway, Courtney's question. I'm sorry, Courtney, I've been busy. Uh... As far as that river goes, I'm not even, I'm all over the place today. As far as that river goes, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, we know the guy, we know this player is probably not uh, like super, super sharp, like with, with that, with, with like the sizing. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Look at that guy that in super good. So it's possible that like, it's, it's possible that we're just giving up $3 there. But I thought that, you know, the chances are a player, the player's got either a straight could have a nine, I guess, and just be just I'm all in just with a nine. I guess that's possible. Could have a five, which I guess would call if we shoved. I mean, I, I, we probably could have made an extra three dollars there, but I guess I shouldn't worry too much about it. <laughs> I guess I should uh, worry about the bigger things in life, huh? This is a great spot for us, as long as uh, okay, call calling is cool with me. Could re-raise, but I think calling is fine. If we spike a little eight, I got a date with an eight. That's right. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. And the eight showed up just on time. I like my dates to be prompt. That's actually very true. Big points. Anyone that ever has a meeting with me, if your meeting is at 3 o'clock, I expect you there. Not at 2.58. I expect you there at 3 o'clock, especially for a phone call. That's true. <laughs> so what to do now? I think we should re-raise. I think we should re raise. That makes some sense, right? Let's make it uh, 28. Got to make it a little bit bigger here because this player's got so much. You know, don't want to make it 21. You know, I think 28 makes a reasonable amount of sense. We could have 10 9. We could have 6 5. We could have uh, 6 9. All these things are possible. Let's see what we're up against. Two pair. He's actually not drawing dead. Can you just sweat an ace on the river? 10 is not going to cut it. Three pair, no good. Full house is good. All right. Courtney, I'm sorry for the wait. Anyway, your question is, tips for getting through a huge tournament. Should I play aggressively or passively at the start? So my general advice to you would be you should play more aggressively in general just because of the fact that if you're playing, let's say you're playing a 2,000-person tournament, it doesn't make any sense for you to like play cautiously, play patiently, and wait and wait and pass up on close situations, only then to take a close situation four hours later and then you know have it just be a waste of time. Now, if you're looking to play for the experience of it, then maybe play cautiously and wait for your absolute best spot. But generally speaking, if your goal is to win or make the most money possible, then you should definitely like if there's a close situation early on, put pressure on. If there's a situation where you think you're probably ahead, but you could be flipping, but you're like slightly more sure that you're ahead than you're not, definitely get in there. You know, like taking those small advantages will let you put more pressure on people, right? Like we've, we, if you've watched my tournament videos, I talk about that there, right? So having 3,000 chips isn't quite as valuable. Like I would happily take a flip at the beginning of every single tournament just because getting 2x starting stack puts me in such a good spot to put pressure on other people. So I think that you definitely want to do that in that kind of tournament. My, uh, my other advice, like generally random grab bag advice, don't be worried about what the average stack is in the tournament. Be more worried about what your stack is and how that relates to the players around you. You know, don't be worried about 
what average is because it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's like, uh, you know, it would be like telling what your average, it's like telling what the average height is amongst all third graders and you're in third grade. Who cares? It doesn't make a difference. You can't do anything about it. So just try to play your best poker, you know, stay focused on the players around you at your table. Uh, pay attention to the blind structure and the levels in the tournament. That's going to make a big difference as to what your strategy is. So keep an eye out for that. The faster, the more aggressive you'd like to be. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I feel. What is my advice for focusing on a long period of time? Well, uh, I would say don't overwhelm yourself. Make sure you get a good night's sleep the night before, eat before the tournament, you know, all that stuff. I decided to check here on the river because he's not calling us with worse than a, than a four high flush. Obviously, it's more than a four high flush, but he's not calling us with worse. And uh, I think that I'd rather give him a chance to bluff. So he checked back on turn, which means to me, I mean, I really doubt this guy has a full house. And his sizing is like, you know, come on. What king of hearts hand plays this way? What, you know, what jack of hearts hand? Uh, I'm a little suspicious. We could be beat, but, you know, I don't know if we're beat that often. Need, need I say more? That's right. You know? Can't be bluffed. Can't be done. Well, it can be done, but it'll... <laughs> it'll won't be cheap. All right. We're on a heater. I'm feeling pretty good about these little puppy dog feet we got here. I know it's not much, but, you know, that hasn't stopped us before. Let's see a flop. Let's see a three, dealer. All right, we flopped ourselves a three straight end of the old toppest of pairs, so I'm loving the situation we're in right now. Going to be calling his bet... That's right. I call. I call. I call. Let's see a turn card, dealer. Another sweet turn card for us there. We flopped ourselves, turned ourselves an open ender, and he checks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we want to bet an amount that looks like we could be bluffing or light, like just that we floated flop. We called flop with ace-10, and now we bet. <laughs> I don't know, all of a sudden I became like Russian I became some Russian villain That was a very like <laughs> Sure Alright, so we got it done Jack for puppy dog feet Just uh, gave him the business there uh, Anyway So, I don't know why you're asking me advice on focus Because clearly after watching this video You would discount it anyway <laughs> uh, Yeah eat, uh, eat some food, drink some water that's uh that's that's what I do and it works real well. <laughs> All right. See? Late night videos, so much better casting was, you know? I I can't stand to go back and watch videos of me when I'm just in like poker talking mood, but I always know a good video when I can go back later and watch it and make myself laugh. And uh, I'm sure this video <laughs> this video will definitely qualify cuz there has been some bizarre things going on, that's for sure. All right, let's pull a question. Oh, this is a long question, but I will pull it because your topic is interesting, and I haven't talked about it before. So, look at this. This is an essay, but I, it's cool. I don't mind. I can do I can do essays. Look at these nits. They're just like, all right, I'll give you 50 cents. It's like a toll booth, you know? That's what we're doing. Ship the quarters. All right. Cat Avatar doesn't know if he wants to play anymore. No more. No mas? No mas. Okay. Got a call here just because button's on him, so we're a small blind out of position, which happens sometimes to uh, just, you know, you don't want to raise because we're out of position. The small blind out of position, it's all horrible things. So I think now we should bet... Not really sure about this. Uh, I could do a couple of things here. There are quite a number of things we could do. We could do something like this. You know, we could do something crazy, silly, overbet. Could just check, of course. That's a reasonable option. I think we're going to do this. I like this. I think there's too many hands he has that are just like 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 6-8. Uh, or just hands that are like pair and draw, a uh, king six with the king of diamonds, you know, stuff like that. So I think if we really pull out the old hammer and give him the business, I feel like uh, he probably can't can't call there too often. 
Uh, it's going to be hard to do your question if we're heads up, I'm afraid. But I don't really want to change tables either at this point. I guess if you're just going to toll me, I'm just going to keep giving me 50 cents. I guess I'll just sit. Okay. I think we can fold this as deep as we are. I, th I mean, uh, he's been so tight. All right. No, no folds. No folds here. Except for my opponent. <laughs> All right. Dear Jay Carver. I'm going to have to slightly... <laughs> okay, I'll read it. It's going to be tough to read this long question, though, when we've got a heads-up match going on. Just saying. And we've already seen just how laser eagle-focused I've been. Eagle-focused, like a hawk. That makes some sense. That's a reasonable thing to say. I'm going to check raise here. Got ourselves two overcards, second pair, three straight, three flush. All these things make me very happy. Happy enough to raise it up to $10 here, that's for sure. I take your $3. That's right. I gave him the claw business. All right. Well, we've won poker. <laughs> that's it. We won. <laughs> we won at poker. All right. No, 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 not at. We just won. We just won poker. Okay, so I won't do a final end balance in case somebody sits with us, but I will do your question now at least. Your question is, Dear Jay Carver, I was happy to see you mentioned in the September 14th issue of The Economist. Did they come to you and ask you questions about online gambling? What is the story behind the story? And how is there not a Colin, a Col Connor, Connor McGregor avatar in the photo under the avatar? You need to do better with your artistic integrity. Uh, yeah. So if you didn't find, if you didn't see that, I, I had an article. There was an article in the Economist about online gambling, of which I was like the main vehicle. Uh, I had a. It's one of those things where they were looking for a story about online poker coming back to America and why it mattered that it was now regulated and got in touch with me, um, and that was it. So I, it's I think if you just Google it, you can probably find it. I, I linked it so I linked to it pretty, pretty much everywhere. But uh, yeah, it exists. It was a cool, cool little short thing. The Economist, pretty awesome. I mean, I have you know that's a pretty pretty mainstream magazine to have to be in. I, I was definitely pretty proud of that one. The article seems to insinuate the problem was gamblers stealing from other gamblers with no recourse instead of gamblers really being victimized by unregulated gambling sites. Yeah, I mean, I definitely meant that more in terms of like sites that didn't pay because me personally, there have been many sites that didn't pay me um, the money that I had on their site for some reason or another, like, you know, uh, there, there are lots of them. That's the problem with these unregulated, you know, the unregulated sites. There's no penalties for people being scumbags There's no penalties for sites being scumbags. So you really need, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have some teeth in, uh, you know, in, in the industry. That's for sure. And your next set of questions is when is ultimate poker coming to Texas? <laughs> our politicians are very are very bribable with Texas twang in our lo local accent. That word is pronounced lobbyable. <laughs> and we have a huge population with no brick and mortar casinos. Run that idea up. I'd love that. That is uh that is great. Well, uh I appreciate that Evan by the way. Evan wrote that question. So, I have no idea what the st status of that is. I feel like Texas will be a hard state to get into, but uh I don't know anything about that. That's just me guessing. All right. Well, I guess we've uh we've won at poker, as I said, one poker period. So, let's uh let's flip around a little bit. Uh nope. That's it. This is what we're doing. <laughs> Got ourselves a pumpkin, you know? That's it. <laughs> there we go. How's that? You know? You guys see? I see. It's great. So, yeah, we ran it up. That's what we did today. We started with uh, fourteen hundred twenty-four dollars and eighteen cents, and thanks to the heater pumpkin, which people never get rid of, <laughs> the magical run-hot pumpkin. So we now have fourteen twenty-four eighteen, and we managed to win one ninety-two 
and 27 cents. 16, 16, 45, that's pretty sweet. We did what the pumpkin said and we uh, ran it up, huh? So thanks so much for watching as always, guys. Don't forget, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those cool things. I'm actually on Facebook more than anything else for Run It Up these days. So if you want to chat about Run It Up or anything like that, check me out on Facebook, facebook.com slash jcarverpoker. And that's it. I will see you guys back for more tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching as always. I had fun. Hope you did too. Peace.